ஜாங் The real meaning of this is I always tell that God is really worried and bothered and uh, thinking about answering your prayers but very important is God is waiting for the person who's praying always God sees who's praying and it's very important that you need to understand God has some qualities that you need to have and when you have those qualities only God answers your prayers so I was telling you all there are many seasons that we see there are winter seasons there is summer season there is rainy season there are so many seasons that we see but for Christians there are some seasons of waiting there are some seasons that we we go through pain but this month God wants us to understand it's a season that God answers our prayers it's a season that we listen to all the answers so when God answers our prayers how it is going to be I have been talking the whole month about when God answers our prayers how it is going to be is like God takes Elijah through a training the first training that God takes him is physical training God takes him to Kerith Cherith a place where God cuts him off from the world ready so all you little bit cuts him off from the world and God when God cuts him out from the world he is sitting in Kerith and just eating the food that comes from the ravens and drinking the water from the from the river that's how he's he's cutting himself from the world that is a fleshly a physical cutting that god takes him last week when i was talking about elijah i was telling you how there is a spiritual training that god takes him through spiritual training is the call how god called him and i was talking to you all how god breaks his pride by going and asking a widow to supply his needs so god was building him spiritually but today when i'm i'm when i'm taking all through yes it was it was a training for elijah but not only for elijah it was a training even for the widow in zaribath it was a training for her also when today we are going to look into few things that god is doing uh, uh, let's turn our bibles to first kings chapter 17 verses 12 first kings chapter 17 verses 12 if somebody could read that for me as surely as the lord has surely has the lord your god lives your god lives she replied she replied i don't have any bread i don't have any bread only a handful of flour and only a handful of flour in a jar in a and jar a, and a little olive oil and a little olive oil in a jug in a jug ah oh. i am gathering i am gathering a few sticks to take it home and make it a meal for myself and my son that we may eat eat it and die that is the verse here i'm going to talk to you all about 3 d's 3 d's and the first d is doubt this woman 
this widow who is in zaribath elijah comes here and he asks her for a meal to eat he is asking can you give me some food to eat the first thing she says you know what she says has surely has the lord lives she replied i don't have any bread i don't have anything you know the first thing that a christian the bitterest enemy that you have in your life is doubting god never ever have this doubt in your mind this doubt is a very dangerous thing you doubting that god will provide your needs is the most dangerous thing here she started doubting why she is doubting god i am telling you is when you read verses 9 verses 9 go at once to zaribath in a region of sidon and stay there i have directed a widow there to supply you with food that means i have directed a widow god is saying that i have told to the widow to supply you food i have already told her that means god has told this widow to supply food and she is saying to elijah i don't have food she is going against god she listened to the voice of god now she is doubting whether god will provide that is the worst thing that can happen in your life don't ever doubt god if god has brought you thus far if god has brought you till here he is able to take you further also amen you need you know this women in her life uh, she is faithless she is looking at the circumstances you know sometimes walls talk to us walls what pastor you are telling yes you know when a house you are building and you are not able to build further those bricks tell you that you cannot build this house anymore walls talk to you sometimes situations your body talks to you your body when you are not able to walk your leg is not able to come out of the bed the leg says that's all your life is over you know sometimes your purse talks to you i am empty for from now on which your life will not be led, led properly your purse talks to you and your situations around you talk to you every day when you get up in the morning you look at all your situations and you think i cannot live anymore but here i am trying to make you all understand one thing never ever doubt god he is a god your situations and circumstances amen never trust in your situations your situations changes day by day your situations comes and chokes your neck your situations tell you that you cannot go further but the god who has created you is the one who handles all your circumstances she is a she is a lady she is looking at her situation you know what she is saying she is saying no food in my house what she said was right what she said was correct why no food because famine no rain famine is there and she is telling i'm planning to collect some sticks and cook this last food me and my son wanted to eat that and die because our situations are very bad she forgot that her situation is not handled by her or by the climate her situation is handled by god the one who created everything amen sometimes we need to we need to look there is there is an answer in your situations you need to look at the provider you need to pro- look at who is the one who is controlling your life sometimes we look into uh, temporary things that controls our life temporary things are not things that are going to control your life if you are if you are doubting in your heart that my life will not go further that means you don't believe in the promise of god you are doubting the promise of god that means you are doubting that god is alive in this world you are doubting that he doesn't live he is a dead god you are starting to doubt his power you are starting to doubt his position if you doubt his power and position you will not see miracles in your life amen don't ever doubt the power and position of god when we were starting our ministries i was not this fat i was very thin if you go and see my old photos i itself feel bad to see my photos i was so thin once they invited me i was not so very well known like how i am now huh? i was invited to a church i went in a bike samurai bike and uh, me and uh, brother robert he's not here robert and myself we both went in the bike we went and stood near the church seeing the outward appearance they took robert's bible and him and they took him inside and went they took him inside i am standing on the road they took him made him sit on the stage he is wiping his sweat 
and he's saying pastor pastor i said Shh. and i also went and sat next to him and that pastor was a telugu pastor he said darwin uh, ebenezer pastor bangalore nunchi ochinaru ochinaru he said andru chappale kotandi i thought why they are saying to hit in the chapel uh, then only i came to know in telugu it is chappale means uh, clapping hands then robert was saying you pastor pastor then i said okay i'll go and i went pass for that pastor it started sweating oh you are only pastor <laughs> after i finished the sermon he came and took the mic and said i saw his outward appearance and i i thought he is not the pastor and he is the pastor but i came to know after he gave the message god in him is greater amen he has a big god in himself amen sometimes sometimes we start doubting and we don't know the power of that person if you doubt god that means you don't know the power of god don't ever doubt god in your life he is not a bachcha person who grew up with you he is not the blood and flesh like how you and i have limits he is a god who can travel anywhere he is a god if he says he create something he is a god who does the impossible in my life amen never doubt god doubt is a is a is the worst disease that you can have don't ever doubt god you know mr bean you all must be knowing mr bean who dances Mr Bean is a person who made everybody laugh. You know one person asked him in an interview recently, Mr Bean, what was the worst incident in your life? He said I have one incident which I can never forget. He said I was traveling in a train and a man sat next to me and he told sir I looked at him, I thought he recognized me but the man said sir I have heard that there are seven people same like each other in this world. and you look like mr bean and mr bean told it seems i don't look like mr bean i am mr bean and that person laughed and said you cannot be mr bean because he is so famous he is mr bean and he just looked at him and he turned off it from that time he never turned the other side you know doubting sometimes so many people want to just take a pic with mr bean this person traveled the whole night with mr bean not believing that he is mr bean you know there are so many christians who are traveling with jesus without knowing the power of jesus in their lives amen you know why we are not able to encash all the blessings that god has kept for us because you have an atm card but you don't know the value of the atm card you keep doubting whether there is money you keep doubting whether there is blessings i am telling you all this zari ba this widow is 13 and 14 you see where ma yeah. elijah said to her elijah said to her don't be afraid don't be afraid go home and do you, do as i have said go home and do as i have said but first okay. but first make a small loaf of bread for me something you know there are some things that god requests us to do there are some things that god demands us to do what is the first thing 
here you can see there is there is a principle that is taking place a formula he is saying i understand that you have very little in your house i understand there is famine i understand that you are planning to eat and die i understand everything but now you understand this first go prepare something bring it to me first amen always god has this habit he says first me everything else next amen hallelujah if you are strong in your root only you will see a fruit if no root no fruit hallelujah hallelujah you all need to understand that you need to be strong with god first me he saying go prepare something and get first for me you think god is selfish why he wants always first things in your life in your in your heart he wants the first place in your house he wants the first place in your money he wants the first place in all your likings he wants the first place he wants you to search the house of god he wants you to pray he wants you to worship everything he wants you to give the first place to god if somebody asks you where is the best place that you enjoy in your life in your mouth he wants it to come that it's the presence of god and nothing else first place is god first place is god he wants that first place the bible says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you first place is god priority is god you know to give this first place to god is so difficult when somebody handsome or somebody cute comes into your life to give first place is god to god is very difficult and when we give first place to that person and that person is the one who starts killing our life when you give first place to your work sometimes we don't come for worship we don't pray we give first place to some things sometimes those first places start giving us trouble in our life sometimes i know i know i know parents who love their children so much first place for their children and the same children start hurting them they come to me and say pastor these children are hurting me i say i always ask them which place did you give them which place did you give them god yes my god is a possessive god jesus is a possessive god always he wants that first place he never wants to give up that place for anybody and if you give that place to something or somebody he knows how to take it back he knows how to take it back here the widow is learning a lesson here elijah is demanding elijah is demanding and telling okay elijah is demanding what he is demanding he is demanding and telling i know your situation don't keep talking all nonsense to me go inside your house cook and bring it first to me first you might be having thousand valid reasons but i'm not bothered about your reasons i want you to give me in that first place first place to me early in the morning when you get up first place to god not your mobile phone when you walk out first place to god amen first day of the week is sunday first thing that i do in the first day of the week is worship god that's why you need to come to the church first thing when i earn my salary i don't spend everything and then come and give it to god i take my salary first place to god and then only all my needs when you start giving this first place You know what is the promise that Elijah says he says a promise let's turn to continue reading continue reading for this is what verses 14 verses 14 for, for, for this, this is, is what, what the lord the lord the, the god of israel says the god says, of israel says the jar of flour the will not be used will not be used up and the jug of oil and the jug of oil will not run dry will not run dry until the day until the lord until the day the lord sends rain to 
this land amen until the day that means he saying famine will be around but just because you gave me the first place i will also give you the first place you will never see famine in your life amen amen when we give first place to god this is a miracle that happens i don't know i know many people might be watching me live also but i'm not trying to be partial i am trying to be open and normal has ever i am just telling you all that if you give first place to god even when there is famine around your family you will be fed by god the bible says the jar of flour and oil will never go down it seems it will always be full amen your house will never see thirst again your house will never see that it will always be full it will be overflowing that is the blessing of god that god gives in your life amen hallelujah hallelujah the first d is what the first d is doubt the second d is demand in this demand itself elijah is trying to say her don't be afraid ma don't be afraid god is there god is there he is encouraging her saying don't doubt god you bring it god is going to supply all your needs the third thing that i want to say and i'll conclude is turn your bibles to verses 15 verses 15 she went away she went away and did as elijah had told her she went away and did as elijah did as elijah told her amen the third third thing was the decision when i think about decision you know your decision today decides your destination tomorrow in life we all take so many decisions every day is a decision we all finished our 10th we think which subject to take and so many people come and tell us science maths nobody came and told me because my marks was like that and everybody knew i could take only arts i got only some oh it's on, on live huh? but it's okay i got uh, 47% I got 47% in 10th. And the most happiest person was my teacher. Sujamis was the most happiest because nobody expected that I'll pass. <laughs> nobody expected. <clears throat> And when I came to college, I had to take a decision which college. Sometimes all our decisions go wrong, no? My dad took a decision for my for me thinking that if I'm away from him i will get spoiled so he made me study in a college very far from this place jayanagar i studied my college so that was the place i got spoiled more <laughs> in jayanagar uh, i did my college <clears throat> there are so many decisions that we take sometimes joining with friends i joined with very bad friends that was i don't know whether good decision or bad decision my life spoiled and after that one day there was a very big problem in my life that i went through where i was hurted and sat all alone in my life when i was sitting all alone i came to the church and took one decision that i will live for jesus christ because that same evening i wanted to consume poison and die i didn't want to live anymore because i couldn't write my second pc exams because i did not have attendance when i was standing i was standing in the last row of the church I used to go to the church and only play the fool in the church. I used to tease all the pastors. I used to have a gang with me because I used to finger everybody. Whoever preaches whatever point they preaches, I know to bring a comedy out of it. So I used to do all this so everybody used to uh be with me all these boys, but when my life was totally broken, I was standing at the back. And when I was standing at the back that day when pastor was preaching as though he was preaching directly to me. I was thinking how this man knows all my life how he knows everything but later only I came to know it's the holy spirit he wanted to touch me that day if at all pastor did not give me that sermon that day i wouldn't have been living today and that day when i was preaching i made a decision and i asked god oh lord if you're really a true god 16 years i was in a christian family but i did not have a personal touch with jesus jesus christ so i told him everybody says that there is jesus I don't know where you are. I don't know 
if you are really true but today i'm asking you my life is gone havoc evening i'm planning to die if you are a true god come into my life in a market if your loved ones are searching for you how they'll push everybody and come i couldn't see when i'm standing at the back there is one person pushing everybody and coming and suddenly he comes and he hugs me and when he hugs me i started crying i am a person who never even lifts my hand in the church i used to see style where people will feel bad i never used to clap also that was the first day i started shouting and crying in the church my situations around did not change but my situations inside my heart started changing and that was the day i took a decision i took a decision that from now i will live for jesus from that day till today it's about 22 years and till now jesus christ has never left me alone i have gone through many paths in my life many pains and sufferings many people insulted me many people planned against me so many people tried to kill me also they gave a person 10000 rupees in bangalore layout they told they sh- to kill me and in that same house the husband came and gave it to the wife and told tomorrow we have to i have to go and uh, hit this pastor darwin ebenezer that amma gave that money back and told it seems go give it back to them give it back to them because pastor darwin ebenezer prayed only our houses together today i never went and spoke on behalf of me but holy spirit was protecting me from those days onwards it's a, a decision that we take that is going to decide our destination today if i am a pastor if i am leading this church is because of one decision that i took the decision that this widow took is to listen to what elijah told immediately she went she cooked and brought it out and she started seeing miracles i am telling you all every decision that you take in your life is very important and when you come into the house of god you are not just coming to clap your hands put an attendance you're not just coming here to see what's happening and going no when the word of god is coming it will surely speak to you and when it is speaking to you if there is something that you need to change in yourself if you change and go outside i'm telling you all the promise of god will start fulfilling in your lives god will start answering all your prayers from today from today if there is something that you need to change in your lives let god understand that let's all close our eyes